Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you can't beat them, join them. So we're going to be looking at some news. I just chose two random articles. Some of these are a little bit late and gay, but <laughs> here we go. Uganda discovers gold deposits worth 12 million USD. That's a shitload of gold. Uganda announced that it had discovered 31 metric tons of gold. Holy shit. Waiting to be mined in the country after several surveys were conducted. A spokesperson from the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development in Uganda, Solomon Muyita, said that these reports are aimed at attracting gold miners and investors in the crypto sector. Well, you have to be careful with that because, uh, for obvious reasons, uh, I'm just waiting for the United States government at this point to go like, oh, there's oppressed hoochie tootsies in the region. We, we, we gotta fucking save them and steal their gold, of course, <laughs> because it's what happened in Iraq. If you guys don't know, uh, the, presum the presumption was we went in there from WMDs, but in reality, we stole a shitload of Iranian gold out of the bank of Iraq, and no one knows where that gold went. We just fucking went in there, took it, and still to this day, <laughs> Who knows where that gold is? Probably in someone's fucking, uh, some senator's or some general's fucking basement. But anyways, uh, in a bit to boast, boost the country's economy, the Ugandan government has licensed a Wagi Wagi gold mining co company, a Chinese firm, to start producing gold products in Bursa district. The company embarked on the construction of its gold refinery valued at $200 million in phases in the district in 2016, Moita said that the discovered gold could start being mined immediately. So, of course, here's a picture from the Ugandan Investment Authority. So, if China's getting involved, you can probably bet that their CIA or other world powers going, hmm, how can we destabilize the region because we can't let those Chinese get that sweet, sweet gold? There's probably all kinds of under, like, Handed wet works and shit going on. Who really knows? But that's my guess. Uh, refining gold locally could enhance job creation and improve social service delivery to those living close to where the mineral is extracted. Ugandan President Yari Museveni has called for the local refinement of the community called by external refinery criminal. It is criminal for anyone to argue for the continued export of raw materials in Africa when there are 90% more value in that product that you are giving uh, to the outsider. So there, he's not wrong. If, if God forbid, if I was press of Uganda, I'd be sh shutting that shit down. I'd be having the military fucking secure the airspace, the border, so I'd be like, hey, this is our gold, and we're going to use it to enhance Uganda. We're going to have Ugandan companies mine it. They're already making errors by having China like mine it and refine it. But I'd be like, nope, domestic only, bitch. If you're foreign, you get the fuck. I don't care if you're West, East, Russians, but that's just me. Tan Chun Chi, hopefully I pronounced that right. I'm probably butchering all these names, but the general manager of Wagai Wagai, or Wagai a guy, gold mining company says that the investment has reached a uh, uh, U.S. $60 million. He explains that they have been lagging behind in the construction due to a lack of the two licenses. The company has recently obtained. A gold production license in March this year and has a 21-year lease to mine gold in that country and expect to double their speed because they expect to, to begin gold production by July 2023. So it's still a while away. we still got a whole year to go and something tells me that Uganda is going to become a hotbed. Uh, if I had to guess of some future civil war conflict between here and there because gold is a precious commodity that people fucking want. It uh, doesn't matter if you're West, Russian, or Chinese. Likely, there's going to be some shenanigans involved to get that sweet, sweet gold. The company has in invested $200 million towards constructing a refining, refining facility. Despite all the gold discovered in the country, the mining, di the mining difficulty is notab notably high. And, and this impacts the amount of gold that is actually mined around 2,500 to 300 metric tons. Our mind every year. Damn, that's that's still a shitload of gold. Uh, let's still be honest. Uh, let's see if uh, if this in indeed the volume that we have is time to clean our house and do business, developing ourselves in a country by on by going to the middle 
Income, status, and beyond, said Winnie Nagri, mineral development expert. So he's not wrong there. Uh, again, Uganda should just secure this personally and go only domestic only. Boot out the Chinese, keep the Americans out, keep the Chinese out, and keep this in-house. Uh, and make sure you have all the resistance groups or unhappy people in your country well contained and secured because chances are there's going to be foreign powers outside of your control trying to fuck with your country to get this gold. And of course, like you're, you're going to see the West, you're going to see America in general being all of a sudden having an added interest in Uganda. It's like everything else in Africa when there's oil, diamonds, or other reserves, rare earth minerals. Everyone suddenly gives a shit about uh, Africa and the plight of the African people when resources are involved. Same thing with the rest of the world. Isn't that interesting? But we're going to change... We're going to change gears here, and we are going to go to this article, and as well as get my interesting take on it. So hopefully you guys are enjoying the video. If so, smash that like. It helps this channel and the algorithm. If not, that's fine too. Smash that dislike. Leave an angry comment. Tell me I'm wrong. That's cool too. So, here we go. Military struggling to find new troops as fewer young Americans willing or able to serve. Gee, I wonder why that is. Hmm. Uh, who wants to go overseas, be risk of blown up, shot, and killing people for nothing but college tuition? What What a goal. Woo. <laughs> shit pay and shit VA to an ungrateful nation that's just going to shit on you and disrespect you. But anyways... A U.S. military, uh, the U.S. military has a recruiting problem with a formal senior military official telling ABC News viable of the all-volunteer force could be at stake. Pentagon data shows a simple, troubling trend. Fewer and fewer young Americans want to serve due to obesity and other problems. Fewer are qualified. Uh, let's see. The Defense Department's top personnel and readiness leader blames the nation's competitive job market as a major comp contributor while testifying on Capitol Hill in late April. Well, yeah, no shit. Because if you can do, if you can make a lot more money doing other things without having to be put in a war zone or having to fucking kill people and murder civilians, they're going to do that instead of do that. Uh, I, I mean, even if it is piling a drone, driving a cool-ass tank, flying a plane, yada yada, I mean, pay is everything. The department is in fierce of compensation for skilled, relevant, and innovative talent. The labor market, exacer exacerbated by the effects of the pandemic and the military-civilian divide, creates a challenging recruitment environment. Well, yeah, because not only that, you're forcing recruits to be vaccinated and getting involved with that horseshit as well. There's a family member I know that they force, they're forcing him to drive a desk now because he refused to get the vaccine. He was on his way to be a, uh, a wizzo on an F-18, but they... they since he didn't want to get the shot, they he's flying a desk right now. They benched him on desk and said, You're not doing shit till you get the, the jabby wabbies. Which is just horse shit. And that's another reason why people don't want to enlist. Because they don't want to be forced to take some experimental, for what they believe is an experimental vaccine. I have to be careful here on YouTube because if you take a slight uh, uh, skeptical stance against the vax, Sushin Washkig is going to fucking nuke you from high orbit. But anyways... A former, a former senior military official told ABC News that recruiters face a great challenge in pitching the benefits of enlisting them. Yeah, I wonder why. With private companies using impressive incentives to entice prospects. Well, yeah, no shit. That, and again, you won't have to serve a country. Uh, you won't have to be a, a stormtrooper one day oppressing American citizens. Uh, read into that what you will. Many of these things that we used to offer, like the GI Bill, are ordered are offered by private industry today, so they're no longer a benefit. The formal senior official said, even at the Marine Corps, which is not usually a struggle to find recruits, is under pressure to meet its goals. We made a mission last year, however, the FY22 provided by arguably the most challenging year in recruiting history. Marine Lieutenant General David Ottingen said is written a testimony before joining uh, Cisneros at the Senate hearing. In addition to COVID-19, the growing disconnect and declining federal favorable view between the U.S. population and traditional institutions, labor shortages, high inflation, and a population of youth who do not see the value of the military service uh, also continue to strain recruiting efforts in the Marine Corps and the session of the mission at risk. Again, United States military, if you're watching this, people don't want to be forced to take experimental jabs and bullshit like that. 
And honestly, you don't have a lot to offer. You can get free college or college tuition other fucking places. And again, not be put... Um, I mean, I, I don't want to sound like an anti-American piece of shit here, but let's be honest, you're not getting a whole lot. And the VA fucking sucks. Uh, so if you do come back home, marred, scarred, psychologically damaged, you're pretty fucked. If they don't hook you on opiates, you know, there's it's going to be hard to recover from that. So there's just a myriad of problems. And not only that, in the political climate right now, you have a lot of people looking at the corrupt government and politicians going, fuck you, why should I serve this government and country when corrupt politicians are getting away with stealing, raping, so on and so forth? Read into that what you will. Can't Again, here on YouTube, can't get into too um, saucy of opinion, but... You know the reasons why a lot of people are losing uh, faith and muster in the United States government because um, who wouldn't at this point? They're just fucking us over. Uh, let's see. Only 9% of young people now show a propensity to serve according to the Defense Department polling data shared with ABC News is lowest number seen in 15 years. Gee, I wonder why that is. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe the fact has to do something with uh, sham elections. Oh, oh, just saying. Top reason cited for not wanting to join the military, possibly of injury and death, big one, and fear of developing PTSD and other psychological problems. Well, no fucking shit for what? Shit pay? Oh, whoopee. But the pull of young people who meet the basic standards to enlist the military is also shrinking. Only 23% of Americans aged 17 to 24 are eligible to join without being granted a waiver. This is down from 29% in recent years. According to Pentagon data, obesity and drug use are common disqualifying factors. Uh, well, gee, because you're trying to cope with basic life from previous generations that's fucked them over since the 90s. You know, voting in shitheads and at the Senate and, you know, the presidency and all that. Uh, the former senior official who maintains contact with active duty leaders says the poor shape of some incoming troops has led to the Army to stop trying to have them run within the first two weeks of basic training. That's pretty bad. We're also getting too fat as a country. I mean, look at myself. Uh, so I'm not gonna, I'm not judging anyone there. They have to teach them how to run. They've had issues with bone destiny to the point that when they do run them, it's ended up breaking a leg or worse. A hip, the uh, former official said, several old people like me build that bone destiny. A second former senior months. I told ABC News that we have a problem worse than general public realizes to the average civilian who's not are knowledgeable of the situation, think they are all kinds of kids around, but you can't bring them in the army if they're obese. If they've got history of drug use, all the other things, so much a smaller population, the second former official said. The army slightly exceeded it. its enlisted active duty, or FY21, whatever that means, but has so far had only about 40% of its goal, which ends in three months. The few months of the fiscal year, usually the army gets most of its recruits for the year. So I'm not going to read all this shit. Uh, basically, United States military, what it is, is people, uh, again, they look at how the previous generations and veterans have been treated and are going, fuck that. Uh, because, you know, let's be honest here. The truth is, the American soldier is not well cared for. There's many homeless, and I'm being all serious here, no jokes. Uh, I think it's still 22 veterans or 22 soldiers a year killing themselves. And it's just, it's deplorable what this country does to its veterans, how it treats its heroes. And a lot of people look at that. They look at the homeless populations in Los Angeles, New York. And these are people who are heroes who gave everything to serve this country. And what did they get in return? A slap in the face and shit on by the United States government and, by and large, the United States public. And, of course, in an era where the police are being politicized against the people, you look at Canada, you have military being politicized and being infiltrated by cultural Marxism, transgenderism, and all this other shit. People are just saying, whoa, buddy, hell no. And, of course, with the declining health, which this article has already covered, people just don't want to uh, put that much risk in anymore. And for what? shit pay and to be disrespected and to really be handed dis like be disregarded by an ungrateful society and that's the unfortunate thing uh four point six military pay raise included the fy defense budget bill to help working closely with service to leverage all authorities resources and tools so they're trying to raise more money to grab more recruits but 
in all reality, it's the politics of the matter, and people are losing faith in the United States government and the United States itself. We are looking at certain political elements and just going, there's no reason why we should sacrifice anything. And that's not selfish, you know? If, um, and for myself, you know, in my young years, I actually looked into enlisting myself, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, ADD, ADHD, probably mildly autist kept me from being enlisted. So, um, you know, it's not selfish to, to look at this and ascertain. You look what's going on in the world and go like, you know what, I don't want to kill my fellow man, and I certainly don't want to be marred and maimed so some fat-ass fucking politician can sit home with his family and his children and be safe. So, unless if the United States government and United States society and public changes over time and you and actually gives people a reason for feeling proud in the country again, then the United States military won't have a recruiting problem. But as it states, the current political climate, economics, epidemic, and a whole bunch of other bullshit that we can't get into here on YouTube, uh, this can remain to be a problem. So this has been a 16-minute video. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you liked my opinion. Uh, if not, that's understandable. Uh, smash that dislike, leave an angry comment. If you did enjoy this video, though, you can smash that like button. Uh, leave a comment. Uh, uh, check out the description down below. I have a, a subscribe star, which has ex exclusive paywall content if you're interested. And there's also public posts. Most of it is public posts, you know, podcasts, shit like that if you're interested. And there's no need to support this channel if uh, it's, it's all understandable in this economic times. I got gotcha. you. No worries. Uh, but if you do feel motivated to support this channel, that's cool. Thank you. And if not, that's totally fine too. I will see you guys next time. Stay happy, stay healthy, and just take it easy and stay safe as our current economic and political climate continues to circle the toilet. But anyways, God bless. Stay safe. And until next time, take it easy.